Hey, you guys are all awesome. How are you? How are you? Enjoy the pizza? Where's that pizza at, though? All right, go. All right, guys. So when I was first told about being on stage here, I wasn't 100% sure what I was getting myself into. But how many of you guys here have heard of esports? Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope so. So I'm going to read out for a second so I figure out just to build a crowd I'm talking to. I'm going to name some titles, and then you're going to sort of cheer to tell me if you know this title. So if you like it, you'll be like, yeah, all right. Super Street Fighter 4. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super Smash Bros. Brawl. <laughs> Melee. <laughs> For the Wii U. Alright, that's good. Cool. Starcraft. Woo! Dota 2. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, 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 Dota, no Dota love in the crowd. Oh, no. League of Legends. Yeah. Of course. So you guys, that's that's the world I work in. I run and I produce events for esports for those very titles that you just heard me speak. That is what I eat, breathe, and live. So you guys, some of you guys here are going to be future game developers and you're going to create the next esport. Someone here will make a game better than League of Legends. I don't know who it is. Could be Rumbo. It could be Rumbo. MLG 2039. Rumbo. Features. Right? But I want to tell you guys something very, something I wanted to talk to you guys about something. Esports is life. And, oh, and I'll explain why it is. I'm going to tell you why it is. Because when you guys go and make games, a lot of games that are made are just for fun. But in the esports world, e uh, games are a little bit more than just for fun. It's someone's livelihood. Twitch, you know, these tournaments, these people make hundreds, thousands of dollars. If you won the international, you walked away with one million dollars. So it's a little bit more than just a little bit of fun. So I'm going to tell you about my background and how I got in esports, and it starts off with a little bit of a story. 2005-ish, 2000 region, watched uh, Star League game, and it was watching the Koreans, and it came out like superstars with like crazy vests and intros and music, and they were playing StarCraft, and I said to myself, I want to be that guy when I grow up. <laughs> That's who I want to be. I want to be a superstar playing professionally video games, what I love. I love video games. And then when I told my, my dad, I'm like, hey, I know what I want to do when I grow up. I want to play a video game professionally. And he looked at me. He looked at my mother. And he's like, no. And I'm like, I know, though. I know no one. I want to be a professional video game player. I want to go to Korea. And I want to make, I want to have, look like a, I want to be a rock star. I want to have an entourage. <laughs> no. So, I tried anyways, regardless what they said. So, I moved fast forward, I chose my game at Warcraft 3. Warcraft 3, any of you guys remember that game? Yeah. That was it. Frozen from, that's it. That's it. I'm like, I'm going to compete. I, I'm gonna, you know what, though? Back then in the days, there wasn't very many tournaments for esports. It was one of those things where I had to, I was a kid growing up in Brampton, and I decided I'm going to, yeah, so I was like, yeah. <laughs> You're all up in Brampton, and I'm like, all right, this tournament happening in London, Ontario. Never been out of the place, never heard of the place, but I'm going to find my way to this tournament. And I jumped in my 1990 Honda Civic, you know, little reliable ones. Had a little hole in the bottom of the floor, kind of like leaking in the gas tank. But I trucked it right across the, the Ontario to London, Ontario, playing this this tournament. And I messaged one of my friends on the internet, I'm like, I need a place to stay. And I was a little naive then because I just assumed that just because you met him on the internet, it's cool, right? So I told my clan member, asked him if I could stay on his couch, and I arrived at London and I knocked on his door and his parents answered. And they're like, who is this person? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm playing in a tournament tomorrow. And my clan member came up, came up, yeah, yeah, come on, it's cool, it's cool. You know, he's playing in a tournament tomorrow. And they're like, Looks to the father's like, did he tell you? Boy. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely the most awkward dinner conversation I've ever had. Was, was going for that, you know, showing up at one of my clan members' house and suddenly explaining to these people why I traveled across several cities to go play in a tournament to win 
a game of Warcraft 3. I'm telling you, it was. I played that tournament. I came third. Came third. Oh, I know it was good. It was good. You know what? It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. But I realized at that time, Canada needed more esports. If I had more tournaments to go to, I probably would have been ready, and the land situation would have been a lot easier on me. So I then, at that point, you know, told my dad. I said to him. I'm gonna make tournaments. That's what I'm gonna do for my living. I'm gonna make tournaments. And he looked at me. He's like, oh. "All right." He turns to me. He's like, "You gotta give up this esports thing." He got serious now. He's like, "You gotta give up this esports thing because it's never gonna make any money. Never. This dumb thing. You gotta give it up. This foolish ambition of yours. You gotta give it up. Get a good job. Go to school. Get a cubicle. You'll like it." <laughs> so it was all frowny faces for me, but I went to school, went for engineering, went for uh, computer engineering, and midway through, I decided to drop out, and I switched to business. And from there, I decided I'm going to run my own land center. And I ran my own land center, and I started running tournaments. So I ran for Anime North. Anybody remember Anime North? Woo! Did all the video game stuff for there too, and Fan Expo. And, you know, countless others. So Land Nation, where Runbo was at. So I want you guys to know whether or not it is StarCraft, League of Legends, uh, Smash Brothers, there are people who get, or Street Fighter, Ultra Street Fighter, which, by the way, I beat John Gee at all the time. <laughs> Can't hold that day up. I want you to know, though, that these people who are on Twitch, who are these personalities, didn't give up on that foolish dream, and now they're making their lives on esports. So you guys, you hold the, the livelihoods of many future people who will play your games, and you'll be designing their lives. So esport is life. Do you have any questions? Wow, is that good? No questions. I don't know, I was expecting some Q&A. Guess not. When's the next tournament? The next tournament, oh my god, there's a whole bunch. Okay, so Dota 2 coming up, tournament at the end of April. The Dota 2 tournament called the Dota Elite Series. Uh, Starcraft 2 in May. And then a whole bunch of more uh, Land Nation in August. That was right out of George Brown last year, and it's probably going to be right out of, again, this year. Land Nation is a 48-hour LAN party. Uh, basically, you can play any game, but we also have tournaments for League, Dota, Hearthstone, uh, Dota, Hearthstone, Counter Strike, Go, uh, a whole bunch of them. We have pretty much all the esports titles you can think of. And then we also have, like, you know, we all we pretty much play all night drinking Red Bull until the wee hours in the morning and wake up and do it again. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, you guys definitely, if you want to know more esports, uh, check us out at ESChamp on Twitter. ESChamp.com for all our replays, VODs, all that stuff. Oh, you have a question. I do. You do? Is that a challenge for Ultra C3 Friday 4? Because I... Sorry. Um, what about the future of eSports in Canada? Oh, I like that question. That's a really good question. Uh, eSports in Canada specifically has grown tremendously. Some of the most well-paid players in all games are actually Canadian. Starcraft, we have Scarlet. In Dota 2, we have Aoi 2000. In League of Legends, we have Wild Turtle. Like, we, yeah, yeah, Wild Turtle. So, some of the best players in esports e specifically do come from Canada. And it's part of my mission to see that infrastructure grow so that players don't necessarily have to migrate. Because right now, most players, they go to the States or to Korea to be able to support their livelihood. So, future of esports, you're looking at it. No, okay. <laughs> But yeah, it's all about building infrastructure, it's about Twitch. Twitch has been a fantastic help to esports. Esports probably would not be where it is without Twitch. Um, but things like that are definitely what's changing the landscape. And people like you will design better the next games. Yes? Do you see the situation growing? So like, for example, like Korea, they have PC Bangs? Yes. Do you see that growing? So PC Bongs were definitely one of the things that inspired me when I opened my land center. I think that people, in, by, in general, like to play games together. I, I think this is a good example of it. Yeah, exactly. Split screen is, 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 is home, right? Uh, I think things like, um, let's say PC Bombs, we're going to see a lot more esports bar. I expect uh, in Toronto, there are two of them opening up in the next three, four months. 
So you have uh, Meltdown and a couple of others that are going to be opening up, and I think you won't see as much as the PC bums because we're very much we have our mobile and so many other things. But I think esports bars are going to be a lot more prevalent in in Canada or even North America, where people are going to be socializing, drinking, especially when the tournaments are going to come together. You know, sports bars. You're going to see basically we're going to drink together while watching esports. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there is no, never enough manpower. Never enough manpower or woman power. To... <laughs> so, <laughs> if you follow us on uh, Twitter, is Jam Tweet at that, or me on uh, Twitter, my face is somewhere all over here on this background, uh, at Draconis, uh, or that way, or ESChamp.com. Go on there, there's a contact button somewhere on there that will get you to figure it all out. Uh, what? Oh, a question! Oh my god, I didn't even see you, I'm so sorry. Uh, in your opinion, uh, what's the most underrated esports game? Uh, the most underrated esports game? Like, it's not popular, but it's fun to watch. Oh, okay. Street Fighter. It has Street to be Street Fighter! Fighter. Yeah. Street Fighter is in a very interesting, specific spot because it is the easiest to watch, it's really simple to pick on. It's like, you know, to, to watch a Street Fighter game, it's very simple. You don't have to explain it, unlike a League of Legends or Counter-Strike. Um, it's very easy for someone to follow a Street Fighter game. It is unfortunately the smallest of all the esports in terms of viewership, but it is definitely the most hype. Like, you cannot beat Evo hype, you cannot beat Marvel vs. Capcom, man, that Marvel curly mustache, you know, all those good memes that came out of it. The fighting game community has a very strong and deep roots. And their games are incredibly interesting to watch. Super fun. Oh. Alright, yo. know what you need to do. Yeah. Um, what do you want to see in, in like the next big esports game? In the next title. So if you design a title, there are key things you need to do. You must have spectator mode. Dear God, please make sure you build a spectator mode. If you don't build a title that has a spectator mode, I will cry. Replay modes, those are things that are very important. Balance. Balancing your titles is super difficult. Blizzard has become the king of balancing, which is why they're the only ones who still make RTSs, because balancing is hard. Um, what? Yeah. So, balance, balance, uh, replay, spectator mode. Making your game spectator friendly. Like, spectator friendly has to be the key, because a lot of people, when you design your games, you're designing for people to play. Esports is about people watching. It's about watching people show off their the highest abilities that they can do in a game and being able to translate into a, a good watching uh, esports, a, a good uh, spectator sport is important. Right? So definitely spectators and balance. Those are those are things I think is important in the next esport. <laughs> my, my, my days on the mic, unfortunately, are done because now I have my commentators, which I hire, and they do all the shit talking on the mic. So I don't do any. My, I, I start off. I did some commentating. I moonlighted as a commentator for a while um, for Marvel and then Starcraft, but um, but now I have my commentators and they do it. Ooh, that's a really good question. Okay, so commentating is... So his question was, how do you get into commentating? And that's actually a really good question. I'm actually really, really glad you asked. Commentating is a really important thing about esports. It's like, I, I, they actually make, they make the, the tournament. Commentators, like, from me, perspectively, I always look for commentators. But they're really hard to find. A good, good commentator? It's really hard. First thing you need to know is your strength. There are two types of con commentators, play-by-play -play and color. Got to remember that. You got to figure out which one you fall into. Are you more analytical or are you like the hype man who would be like, where's your curly mustache at, right? You got to know where you stand and what your person is. Both are important. Don't get me wrong. Both are important, but you got to know where your strength is. And then you got you to gotta practice. You got to practice and you got to practice. You got to get on the mic. You're going to have one viewer, and that might be your mother because you told her to tune in. But you got to, it doesn't matter. You got to practice. You got to practice. You go in the mirror. You got to, any opportunity you get to practice what you're doing is, is key. And then you got to network. Then you got to network your butt off because it's first comes practice. You got to get to a certain point. And then you got to get your opportunity. So you got to go to every esports event, shake everybody's hand, and say, hey, I'm a commentator, I do this, I have a Twitch channel, or a YouTube channel, or whatever it is that you do, and then you can be the next day nine. 
Because Dean and I is freaking huge. Like, beyond huge. And he, all he did was just count, he casted StarCraft every day. Every day. That's the kind of dedication you need to do to be a good commentator. Is that you've got to dedicate yourself to your craft. Yes. Question. Any more? Oh, hey. My favorite League of Legends character. He would. He will call his ultra, his ultimate, and say, "Demarcia." <laughs> 